Hey, it's Robert Jigala and we are exploring the coastal section of Namakwa National Park. The Namakwa National Park is located on the west coast in the Northern Cape. Driving there directly from Johannesburg is about a 1200 km journey. If you're driving there directly from Johannesburg, I recommend that you make a stop over at Witsant Nature Reserve and possibly at Okrabi's as well and check out my reviews of those. I'll leave a couple of links in the description below. The Namakwa Park is located in the Northern Cape Province along the Atlantic seaboard, which is the west coast of South Africa. We enter the park from the Northern Gate, which is the Honeklapai Gate, and it is all dirt road for a couple of hundred kilometers before you get to that gate with the intermittent bit of tarred road along the way. It's a very scenic drive along the coast to get into the park as well. There are a couple of gates to enter the park or the coastal section of the park rather, and the one is the main reception gate on the south side. There's also a gate on the north side near to Honeklip Bay, and there's a third gate which comes in from the east. Gate times for the park or the coastal section of the park are 5 p.m. regardless of the season. So even though the sun goes down relatively late, in fact quite late during the summertime, the gate time is still 5 o'clock, so that's something to just take note of. The roads in the park are all unpaved roads and some of those roads have very deep sand, so very deep soft sand. And you do need a 4x4 to navigate some of those really sandy sections. Tire pressure is also very important, so you've got to make sure that you've got the right tire so you can bring your tire pressure down, just to keep the footprint of your tires to the maximum that you practically can so that you don't get bogged down in that sand. The thing I like most about the coastal section of the park is this feeling of being out here and there's absolutely no one. You can walk for kilometers and kilometers on the beach and not see a single other person or see a single other footprint even on the beach. It's really beautiful. It's beautiful soft white sand and it just stretches forever and you feel absolutely alone. There's, it feels like there's nobody here besides yourself just walking along this beach almost like you're the first person ever to walk this area. There are various campsites along the coastal section but even when these are fully booked like it, they are now in December when we are here Still, it feels like there's very few people here. The campsites are well spaced apart. And like I said, there's just kilometers and kilometers of open beach that you can walk on. And you still feel like you're very much away from civilization. So what is there to do in the coastal section? Well, first of all, just being here out in nature is great in itself. However, you can fish. This is a marine protected area. So there are specific zones where you are allowed to fish. So you can fish and you can harvest shellfish and that sort of thing. You do need permits of course to do that like you would along any of the coastlines of South Africa. There are a number of hiking trails. So hiking is pretty cool here as well. And because this is not a big five park, there aren't large predators within the park. So you can walk around. You can walk on the beach. You can walk around any of the routes. There are people that we've seen jogging and exercising and taking a run along the various roads to the park. So there's quite a bit of physical activity you can do. We've seen a couple of people mountain biking as well. So if you're a physical person, if you like to get out there and do a bit of exercise, this is a great place to do that. You can swim as well, but if you've never been to the west coast of South Africa, then you must understand that the water temperature is very low. This is a section of the coast where the Benguela current, which comes from the Antarctic, is upwelling and the water temperatures are really low. It's really difficult to swim here unless you've got a, a, a wetsuit and all that. But there would be some really great surfing here. There are some fantastic waves and there's often quite a strong breeze as well that brings in some large waves. So if you're into the water sports, that's cool as well. Just note that the water temperature is a bit unkind. I can imagine you could do some really great kite surfing here as well. We haven't seen anyone doing it, but there's almost always a very strong breeze coming in from the ocean. So I suppose you could get some really good kite surfing done here too. The main road through the coastal section of the park is a 4x4 track. And the reason for this is that there's some quite deep sand along the way. So I definitely recommend that you don't try this without a 4x4 because it is deep, soft, fine sand, and it's also quite bumpy. So 
there is a possibility that if you have a, a two-wheel drive, for example, that once you start bouncing around, you will lose traction. Uh, but it's not very difficult driving, you know, low gear, keep the revs up. Uh, when I say low gear, I don't mean low range, I just mean, you know, first or second in high range. And uh, just keep the revs up and we've had no problems at all. Take note that the sandy sections of the coastal roads have dual carriageways so you can drive past each other without having to stop. However, you've got to keep right on those dual carriageways. I'm not sure why that is the case, but that is the rule. The dirt roads do have quite a bit of soft corrugation, so you do want to have a vehicle that's quite comfortable to drive under those circumstances. Besides the coastal section, the other roads in Namakwa are all dirt roads, but you don't need a 4x4 to traverse these. There's a Cape Fur Seal colony within the park, and that itself is something to see. So hundreds and hundreds of seals, maybe thousands, and this is one of the things that you don't see very often. We've seen this up on the Skeleton Coast in Namibia as well, but this is quite a rare sighting. So it is beautiful to see that sea colony. Accommodation within the coastal section of the park, basically these are campsites, and check out my episode on the campsite that we stayed in, they're all pretty much similar. They're very open campsites with very little in terms of facilities. So there's no electricity, no water, etc. But have a look at my review of that. There's a bit of good information there that you might find useful. It's really windy here. So that is one of the factors I think to take into account. So just be, just be aware of that. You know, it can be, for example, midday and the wind can really be pumping off the Atlantic Ocean. Quite a cold breeze. And so even in the middle of December, it can be quite cool here. If you're camping in the park, then a campfire is a must-have for those cold nights. The nearest towns are a fair distance away, 50 to 60 kilometers. And like I say, that is all unpaved roads, so it is quite slow going. So when you come here, just note that at reception, you can buy water and wood. And basically, that's if there are no other supplies within the park. So you've got to bring everything with you, whether you're coming here to stay or you're coming here as a day visitor. Just come prepared and have all your stuff with you. The nearest large town is Springbok, which is about 50 kilometers away, although there are a couple of smaller towns such as Wunderklip Bay and Clancyer that are a bit closer. I think also you've got to be self-sufficient. There are no restaurants and that sort of thing in the Namakwa National Park, at least not in the coastal section that we've been exploring. In terms of wildlife, there isn't a large density of large wildlife here. So you won't see a lot of that. This is mostly arid scrubland. So you will see ostriches, for example, and the occasional jackal maybe, but you're not going to see much in the form of large wildlife. There is a bit of birding to be done here as well, but again, not as much as you might see in some of the other parks that are more lush and that are sort of more green and have larger fauna and flora and so on. So from that point of view, I think you're not going to see as much as you might expect in some of South Africa's other national parks. So what type of person do I think would enjoy the Namakwa coastal section? I think if you love being out in nature and you like to get out of your vehicle and walk around and be on the beach and do stuff, I think this would be great for you. I think for me, time spent on the coast is always revitalizing. Just being able to sit here and look out at this expansive ocean in itself is a great way to rejuvenate and I think prepare myself for getting back to the hustle and bustle of daily life. So what's our experience been like here? For the couple of days that we've been here, we've really loved it. It's one of those few places you can go where you have these expansive areas of unspoilt wilderness. These pristine beaches and the solitude are really something to experience. This is such a peaceful place. If you enjoy unspoiled views of the ocean, and kilometers of deserted beaches, then I can definitely recommend Namakwa. I hope you found this informative, and if you haven't been to Namakwa, then I hope this gives you a reason to do so. So hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment below, it's always great to hear from you guys. And if you haven't already subscribed, then do subscribe. And until the next episode, go everywhere, see everything, have a great time.